This is Anime Archaeology Station, broadcasting anime analysis to anyone who will listen. We have a basement archive full of an ever-growing collection of anime media. We tell you about it and explain the terms and tropes behind this unique medium. Thanks for joining us. Hello everyone, welcome to the broadcast. Hope you're doing well out there wherever you are. I apologize, we may have a few glitches here today. Something's up with the broadcast tower. So I need to do some digging here and do a bit of a shakedown on the tower. But I'm going to try to fix it before the broadcast is over. So more to come, but if you see any weird glitches, that's what's going on. Uh, Today, otherwise, we're going to get into episode 2 of Double Zeta Gundam. Definitely a different one, a uh, d- different tone than what we've seen in Gundams up to this point. Now, I thought today we'd talk about the genres that Double Zeta Gundam seems to be falling into. This is sometimes kind of an obvious thing to, uh, to look at, but I think it's actually useful to analyze what genres you would say a show falls into and what maybe it doesn't fall into, and indeed some that it kind of sort of awkwardly maybe falls into thinking through what a genre means and how it might apply to a show or not, I think is a useful exercise. We'll talk about that. Um, But before that, a few things to watch out for in this episode. Um, Well, you know, let's let's talk about that after we talk about the genre. So let's go on down to the research room and talk about genre if um, I can do that today. All right, let's talk about genre. What genres does Double Zeta Gundam seem to fall into, at least at this point? I think it really falls into three genres so far. The first is adventure, which might surprise folks a little bit, but I think that is the most forward genre, the the one that we get the most time spent on in these episodes. Judo is this, you know, hard scrabbling teenager who's trying to make a living for him and his sister, uh, hanging around with his friends, trying to take care of things. And so I think we see more adventure with him trying to steal the, the, the Zeta Gundam and then stuff coming in with uh, Axis as well. So I'd say adventure is kind of the, the big one here so far. There's also obviously comedy. There's no question there's quite a bit of comedy in Double Zeta. Now, a lot of folks think Double Zeta has too much comedy. I don't see it that way personally, but that is certainly a a taste thing. But there's certainly more upfront comedy in Double Zeta than in uh, other Gundam shows that we've seen in the past. And I would say in most mecha series that we've seen in the past. But let me talk about mecha here in a minute. Before we get to to that, uh, another thing is there's certainly a coming of age aspect to Double Zeta Gundam. We see Judo have an ethical quandary really here early in Devil Zeta. You know, they're trying to steal this Gundam, but Yazan is far more uh, dangerous than Judo realized. What does that mean? Uh, what, what, how should Judo react? You see him thinking that through. Now, certainly in other Gundam series, the main characters face some of these moral and ethical questions. Um, but we're, we seem to see that affecting Judo more directly here, uh, early in Double Zeta. There is this sense that he is adjusting his behavior as a result of that, whereas Amaro and Camille, for example, are much more processors. That doesn't really change their behavior much initially. It takes longer for that to evolve. So that coming of age aspect, I think, is more foregrounded here in Double Zeta. What about the Mecha, though? Isn't this a mecha show? Well, yes, but the mecha aren't really a fundamental part of the storytelling of this show so far. Yes, there are mecha there, certainly, but this could be about the characters stealing a helicopter. It would be pretty much the exact same story. Uh, There are a lot of different elements to this that don't really change if it's not a giant robot that they're trying to go into. Of course, In most mecha anime, the mecha is a stand-in for kind of any high-powered military weapon. But there's something to be said for the fact that most of the story here is not about 
the mecca, it's about what these characters are trying to do around the mecca. Um, the mecca aren't really fighting much in these stories. There's, a, there's some mecca, you know, involvement, but really it's not very mecha forward, which is a bit surprising. So yes, certainly a mecha anime, but there's not much about mecha to it. Then the question that then comes up is what about the, is this a war show? It isn't yet. There really isn't much happening in terms of the war. Now we know from Zeta Gundam, there's war going on in the background, but the plot so far has really no war. This is about the Argama limping back into port and Axis kind of picking up the pieces from what happened at the end of Zeta. So really what we're seeing more are these characters taking a breather or otherwise reacting to each other in the space of this larger war, but it's really not a war story yet. Much like, for example, War in the Pocket initially is not a war story. It's about this kid living in wartime, but the war isn't a central part of the story initially. So I would argue at this point in the story, Double Zeta is not a war anime. Might get that, to that point later, but right now we're not really seeing those themes much. And that's why I like talking about genre when it comes to these shows. It's easy to throw a bunch of default labels onto these shows and think, well, it's this, well, it's that. But really thinking through, okay, yes, those are there, but how much does it apply to this show? kind of helps you think about what the show is saying and what is going on in the show. So uh, yeah, that's my thought about the, the genres of Double Zeta. At least at this point, we'll see if it changes as the show goes on. All right, Steve, I think we have you now. How are things going out there in Baltimore? Uh, things are doing okay, just okay. I was able to get in on the broadcast. Had to change out a breaker, but uh, other than that, we're pretty good. I know. At least you don't have the alert from last time. Everything's better yeah. this week. Yeah. Yes, yes. Good. Uh, good. No, no roamers around. So Glad to hear. There we go. <laughs> good to hear. Uh, all right, then let's go ahead and get into Double Zeta Gundam Episode 2. All more right. with Judo and Yazan and Bright and all that and get to see how things go. Now, one thing you'll notice in this episode, which I failed to mention before, is that the mecha transforms and turns into a yes. plane and flies off. And the reason is Macross. <laughs> um, Macross had come out in the intervening years between Mobile Suit Gundam and Zeta, and like the mecha designer for Gundam has long said he was super impressed with Macross and the Valkyries and so forth. So the game had been upped, if you will, for mecha. So now got on gotcha. transforming mecha. All right, so we're starting off interestingly compared to earlier anime. There's no recap. Uh, right. It's, just jumping back in, here's the briefcase flying back out to the colony, apparently. Uh, it's kind of a tough place to start an episode. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what happened last night? Uh, the suitcase? Okay, I guess. Um, again, Tomino just really expecting us to keep keep up with it. Wow. A bribe. All right. Yeah. So they literally just shoved a briefcase of money towards the colony and said... You know, take this and let us dock, man. So here's my thing: is that I, I guess these people in this colony are very trusting. They're like, "Oh, hey, look, a, suit a suitcase is floated here. We should just give it to the authorities. Let's not <laughs> open it up at all." Hey, exactly. It also goes to tell us what people think of the Axis now. <clears throat> right. That you have to <clears throat> literally send them a briefcase full of gold for them to let you dock. <laughs> So this is not like a guild ship in Dune where, you know, no one's going to shoot each other up, right? This, well, <laughs> the dudes have got one point, but the other one's just like, well, this is why you're never going to get anywhere. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, it's happened before, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time, but he's also, to your point, like, he's, he's right. Like, they're not going to just suddenly blow up the colony to both in. Uh, but yeah, okay, here's hoping. Here's why you'll never get it to a seat of power. You have to be more flexible. You have to take 
bribes. And I'm not trying to be funny. That's exactly what the message that he's putting out to his junior. Yeah, yeah it's true. just like, you know, this this is what you need to do. You need to be more flexible with these kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you're you right. And to that point, what is this saying about Japan in the 1980s? Right, money. <clears throat> this is what was happening in construction projects and other stuff. There was a lot of money flowing, shall we say. Yes. Yes. I think also the implication here, because he's talking about we can use this abandoned passage and so forth. Remember, they're on side one. Presumably, the construction design of colonies has evolved, and so right. whatever is the construction of, of, of this colony may be very different. It may be something that you don't, you know, you wouldn't be aware of these weird things they did back when they were in UC002, right? Right. Also, I just want to call out, like, notice how much we've evolved our kind of storyboarding and directing from, like, Mobile Gundam. Like, you'd never see this shot where the camera is below and pointing up to two characters. Right. In original Gundam. Uh, just so much more dynamism now. So they say here it's going to tow the Argama. Clearly it's not towing in the our modern nautical sense. Right. You know, this tiny thing. I'm assuming this is a vessel that kind of guides one vessel into another. Right. You know, you, you must be attached to this one other ship to go from one place to another to show that you're officially being guided around. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. All right. <laughs> okay, of course the flower comes out. Lady Alma. <laughs> <sighs> Sudden onset Rose of Versailles. <laughs> right. <laughs> Lady Utna, maybe. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So here's an interesting sort of shift. We know that the uh, their, now their attempt to steal the Zeta failed. Um, they were left behind while the Argama went up to port. And presumably what, what this means here is basically that they're now going to try to sneak back to steal the Zeta Gundam again. And Judo's okay with this. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's got motivation to pay for a better school for his little sister, I guess. Yeah. But, but again, this seems like you know, honestly, yeah. I'm look. I, I this entire scene, I'm like going, your kids, you are actually literally engaging in piracy, yeah. like, literally, <laughs> literally. Mm-hmm. In in the 1600s, yeah, you would have been hung for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, piracy of a, I mean, technically not a mil. I mean, it's a military machine, but it's AUG, so it's not like Federation or right. Zeon or Neo Zeon or Axis. But yeah, still, it's it's not something they take lightly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but so uh, point being, establishing that Judo is he certainly didn't like the violence that we saw in the first episode. But mm-hmm. he's still very much in for all of the larceny. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I really like this. That they ask why Ella bring, brought Lena. She goes, just because, and flips a coin. And they go, oh, she bribed you. Uh, <laughs> just yep. adding in those little bits of, oh, that's why she has the coin. It's just, it's just little... Little bits of connections here that's cool. But also getting across Elle's personality so quickly. That yeah. she's clearly one of the gang, but she can she will play different sides against each other. And very self confident. Yes. They're all very self confident. Yeah, without reason to be, honestly. <laughs> They're eighties teens. They they'll live forever. They can do anything. Okay. So, do we believe him? No. <laughs> no. Are they really just borrowing the Zeta so they can do bigger jobs? Yeah, I, I sure. Yeah, look, little girl, we're just borrowing. It's not illegal. Yes, it is. We're just going to use it for other jobs, and it's going to be okay. No, it's not. Yeah. But you're just a little person, so what do you know? Shoot, 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 yeah. shoot. You know. 
I run a trucking company. Um, I, I, I do truck stuff here, here uh, every so often. So I'm going to steal this M1 Abrams tank and use it for trucking. Right. Exactly. And just perfectly logical. Yeah. I'll just drive it back and forth to my various jobs and it'll be fine. Right. Like that, that makes sense. <laughs> I do appreciate the humor that they throw in here. Yes. Of just the, their mocking of the brother sister dynamic. Um, and in a way that just does feel like, yeah, this is how siblings actually act. <laughs> yeah. I do also have to say, and again, this is not a complaint. This is some of the most 80s character designs it we've got. It sure is. Um, it's it just sure like peak is. 80s stuff here. But I also do want to point out Lena's outfit. Mm -hmm. How for being a very blue collar, it's a pretty nice outfit. You know, it's it's definitely not shabby. Right. And so they're, I think they're trying to get across that, A, uh, Judo and Lena, you know, try to dress her well. Um, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but also, like, <clears throat> we see them as being in a, in a low-class environment, but it's not that bad. You know, they're, right. they're not living hand-to-mouth, <coughs> barely clothing themselves. Okay, so this is Goofy. I'm getting Dig Dug vibes out of this. <laughs> and I think you're absolutely right. There is sort of a video game sort of jankiness to the animation here, very intentionally. But let's also point out the sort of mood swings we're getting here, where just a couple of minutes ago we were dealing with trying to hide the Argama from an Axis spaceship. Uh, and then we switch over here, and we've got them trying to steal this, this Gundam. And then we're swooping into this much more lighthearted, upbeat tone. Um, yeah. I don't think it's bad. I don't think, I don't think it, it, it feels wildly out of place. Uh, it's just we're much more comfortable having lighter moments in here. Yeah. Yeah, right there. That mobile suit sitting right there, and you see the bay, that, that wonderful little detail. And, you know, <clears throat> you know this, it's, it's a... It's a warship, you know, it's an Axis, whatever, Axis ship. But it's just, just a neat little detail. Because you don't have to show that, right? Mm -hmm. You know it's in there, right? Mm -hmm. But it's just kind of neat to see, we're ready to rock. We're ready. <laughs> we're ready to rumble. <laughs> we're rumble Absolutely. fish. Let's go. Yeah. No, it, 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 it gives across that sense of scale. Uh, but also that sense of just <clears throat> uh, things being in transition, right? Where... Yeah. That you know, you imagine that mech is going to jump down for some sort of maintenance or whatever. It 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 adds that 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 sense to it. It is cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Tuxedo Rose. Um. <laughs> also, with the music, this sort of yes. almost Darth Vader march. With this, uh, which points out, and is one of the things I think people don't understand about Double Zeta is that. The, the comedy here is not just to be light. It's also going to be making fun of itself. It's also saying, yeah. you know, we have this character who's very kind of over-the-top sort of shoujo, and we recognize that. Like, we're... we're yeah. We're, we know what we're doing here. Oh! <laughs> oh! My heart. My heart. Okay, so <laughs> now we know kind of what the basic idea is there. Um... You know where where he's coming from. Uh, this is uh, depending on your your translation, Meshima Cello Cello, um, the captain of the Endora who wears this this flower given to him by Haman Karn. Um, <clears throat> so here's our our villain, I guess antagonist, yes. maybe. <laughs> But definitely setting him up. And again, worth pointing out what, what they're setting up here. So this guy is clearly a little over the top. He's... Yeah. This is not Char, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, this is more of a Garma, you know? Somebody yes. who is yes. set definitely in the war, definitely knows what's going on, but more romanticized views of what's going on. Um, uh, not quite beaten down by war at this point. <laughs> no. Oh, boy. Delusional, perhaps. A little delusional, perhaps. 
Um, I do like the idea that Haman is, you, you, you imagine being a soldier working under Haman who is still, to me, one of the most terrifying villains in Gundam. And the idea of granting an audience with her and then her, you know, giving this to you and saying, I trust you with this, that would be a pivotal moment in your life. Um, yes. So I, I do get it. Uh, they're just kind of pushing up to 11 with this character. <laughs> now, again, go ahead. No, I'm just saying, I'm just wondering at like how, like, overly confident we are and like not listening to any reason and like almost as if like he's ignoring everything she just said to him which was you're pretty much the only one that survived <laughs> you know and now he's like abandoning everything he did to survive to that point to to you know for her lovely smile and it's just like oh dude dude well, and you and you see like one of the big things that we tend to see that separates the winners from the losers in Gundam is that bias for action. <laughs> yes. So we're certainly establishing that he has that. Uh, you know, he's yeah. not one of these guys who's just like, oh, I'm going to be safe and, and, and careful. So that it's also telling us as kind of Gundam fans, okay, this guy has a chance. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and the fact that he's willing to jump into things means that there's uh there are there may be a little plot armor you know being added here to this character right let's see all right that, okay human life aside <laughs> that stuff's expensive yeah <laughs> so obviously a little over the top here where he's just slamming everything aside and then we have this very comedic animation of the characters jumping uh, almost i don't know it's like Smurfs comedy. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but it's interesting doing this in an anime where I think you have moments not unlike this in other Gundam series of somebody just going out despite everything else. What we do here is we layer in the kind of inherent comedy of that moment of, right. of how that would inconvenience folks in the, the docking bay and so forth. Right. Wow. What a line, you know? Wow. <clears throat> this is like Otaku Harlequin romance. Yeah, it is, like, yes. You know? Uh-huh. It I like this way and it soothes my burning blood. <laughs> for my love for later Hamon. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a very shoujo line. Yeah. And I think that, that they are putting out, that's kind of what we're doing with this character. We're making this this obsessed character with this woman. Uh, and we know how that well, turns out. And, and and I'd like to point out that he, he made a point to tell the, the one underling that mm -hmm. the rose is coated, so it's going to stay yeah. that way forever. Mm -hmm. But he keeps sniffing at it. I'm like... <laughs> mm, you're not smelling like anything. Formaldehyde. Right. Right. <laughs> Smells like chemicals. Hey, <laughs> reminds me of home. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he coated it and then resprayed it with rose scent. I don't know. <laughs> Regardless, the wind was exactly. Uh, Put that on my tombstone, man. <laughs> I do like how they keep cutting back to this character and showing how. Like proud he is of what he's doing for the Argama, uh, right? Adding that contextualization of a character who just has heard of this ship and what it's been doing and wants to do his part to help it out. Yeah. No. And, and yeah, that's that, that's really important, and, and he'll never get that bribe, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or promoted. But at least he has this. No. Mm -hmm. uh, seriously, though. It, it is kind of important to have that, you know, person who's just like kind of like, see, this is the opposite of that dude. Yeah. He's doing things that that are in, in his mind. This is romantic to him, mm -hmm. you know, to 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 help the the grandma out. But it's not like you know, he's going out in combat or whatever, yeah. misguided, rose at his lapel, whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, but you know, yeah, he's definitely doing the thing there and doing it well. 
One of the the, the uh, things I want to point out about mm. the animation of this mm. particular plot uh, point yeah. that we're at is that you know as he's looking out the window, you can see the reflection of the ship, the Argama. But then if you look down, you see bright. Oh wow! Yeah, you're right. Wow, look at that. Yeah. That's nuts. Like right, right, right where his tie is. That's really cool. Yeah. Huh. Wow. That that's that, a that's, lot that, of detail. That's detail. Yeah. That's yeah. loving detail. Yeah. That's very cool. I'm glad you pointed that out. Wow. Oh. Cool reveal. That they noticed the I didn't call it a petite mobile suit. And we know what that is, but then we cut to it and it's empty. Yeah. So either they didn't make it on board, which we know they did, or they did, and so now that leads us to wonder, okay, how many of them got on board? It's just good storytelling. Really? Oh, that's interesting. Really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> so Bright sees this kid, and he remembers, like, this is not the first time. <laughs> no, no. Oh, dear. That's cool. I think they had to go back to find the footage, add a blue filter over it. Fascinating. Wow. And yeah, back to <coughs> back to Camille. Reminding us this is a real thing. Also, this is something that Tomino does, which a lot of folks aren't willing to do, which is put footage from older shows in there, complete with a different animation style, right? Like, anime, anime has evolved dramatically from 1979 by 1986 but he's mm -hmm. not afraid to show you clips from original Gundam in the middle of this now is this a new type feeling I don't know I have a feeling that it isn't and the reason for that is that we're not seeing any of the colors that we normally see You're right. when we have something like that and we've established in, in, in Zeta that you can't just use powers is willy-nilly yeah, and just go right. oh yeah he has it mm -hmm. so i think he's literally with a drawing on his own experience of saying this is what i know and this is probably happening a third time <laughs> you are correct it's also worth pointing out that you know, why do we keep why does it keep happening to bright and the reason is i think from a writing perspective when you have the kid, the teenager, who gets the mech and is able to go fight the thing, they need a parent. Um, mm -hmm. They need some substitute for a parental figure who can kind of rein them in. And Bright is just ideal at that. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of unfortunate <laughs> for Bright. <laughs> for Bright, yes. <laughs> but it, it does help from a storytelling perspective to have that, uh, that dynamic. So it just needs to be pointed out again. Very goofy. Yes. Uh, complete with the weird open mouth from Judo at the top of the screen there. Yeah. Um, uh, and again, you, you might have scenes like this of somebody hiding, and we're just kind of upping the comedy of it. And again, just look at the dynamism of this animation. You know, mm -hmm. looking underneath the belly of the Argana <clears throat> and then the ship flying up, and the fact that these aren't <clears throat> simple, like, uh, linear line uh, jet trails. It's this curve as it's flying. It's just such yeah. a beautifully dynamic image. Here's what... So, first he asks, where's Fa? Meaning, where's Camille? Meaning, and which we now know, not anywhere near here. Then he's like, okay, where's Judo? He's counting on Judo stealing the Gundam. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and hoping he's going to go out and fight the bad guy, because that's what 15-year-olds do in this universe. <laughs> okay, so I was I was wrong. He was asking if Fa is actually going to pilot the Methus. That's cool. <laughs> wow. He's going to send her out, see how, see how it does. Cool. So <laughs> just got to call out. <clears throat> as, uh, again, kind of comedic as this moment is, as Judah's trying to figure everything out, and all that. Still, when he comes out, what a what a dynamic pose for the Zeta Gundam to be in. Yes. Uh, they just... It can't not look cool, almost. Uh, <laughs> but 
they're clearly trying to like say you know yes this is uh, judo trying to figure everything else and so forth but also like this is a mecha fight we're going to have something cool here now here's my question uh, did bright send out fa so that is mm, is this ray being pulled in on the gurney in Evangelion? Right. Uh, did he send out Fa so that Judo would feel bad and then go out in the Zeta Gundam and Sortie? I don't know. That's uh, Bright is not usually that manipulative. Yeah. Possible. Who knows? Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe it's the third time he's had enough. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, fine. God. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it should so be pointed saccharine. out. Yeah, exactly. The joke here is that he's monologuing, which allows him to get away. Yeah. So clearly having fun with the concept. All right. All right. That That's a great line. Yes. Great joke. Good job. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. He's not wrong, right? right? That Judo is doing... He's His instincts are really good here. When Cello first attacks him, he transforms and flies off. He could have just transformed and then, like, oops, wait, I should have done something else. No, he's like, I'm getting right. out of here. So a lot of his 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 moves here are, are pretty good. And obviously they're playing that for laughs too a little bit. That he, that's not intentional, but I think also they're they're pointing out that intentional or not, right? It's working out. Hmm. So you ask why didn't judo fly off? He's like, well, I just wanted to beat that new suit. Of course not. So I'm assuming his uh, moral center is shifting. Yeah. <clears throat> and also, maybe he's repaying for the, the kindness of Fa taking care of the kids. That's a good and, point. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right, yeah. Liking the fact that, that nobody's being encapsulated in a thing in the middle of space and then having <laughs> it shatter and you're fl floating to your death in space. Glad we're not doing that right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Tonal shift complete. Yes. Definitely, yeah, definitely agree to that. Um, I do like how this episode has provided a little more about the various characters and factions, but it's not even about that. It's really more about getting you used to what kind of show this is. Right. Uh, you know, comparing this to Double Zeta, for I'm sorry, to Zeta, for example, it was all that weaving of who are the Titans and who are the Ayug and so forth. This is much more. We're just going to spend more time with these characters, more time with the situation, give you a bit more of a, a feel of okay, we're going to be more lighthearted, we're going to have more comedy, but it's still um, on the run, folks from in deadly situations. Uh, you know, right. bad things can still happen, but the uh, it, it feels a little lighter, a lot lighter, a lot lighter. Yeah, I was gonna say, it. it well, I mean, it's kind of like, um, you, you know, it's 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 that we we get the flavor of we don't need the flow chart of all the different <laughs> you know political organizations that are at play here. It's it, we we've dumbed down the not dumbed down, but we simplified the plot to the point yeah. of. Instead of having to deal with like all this major stuff going on with mm -hmm. all these different people, and it's really heavy and, and, and whatever, and so many lives are at play, here we, we've narrowed it down to a small group of people with a small plot, which is the Aragama needs to hide and survive. We've got our bad guy from the Axis mm -hmm. trying to find that so you can have the honor of Lady Amon. <laughs> and... Uh, you, you know, as he flies around, so the wind suits is burning blood, and you have <laughs> like you know the 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 judo who's just literally just kind of just being a, a a good guy. He's not trying. Here's the big point: 
he's not a soldier. He's not trying to be a soldier. He doesn't want to be a soldier. He just wants to steal a thing to pay off his, his little sister's schooling, education. That's mm-hmm. literally it. That's yeah. just this is all it is. Mm-hmm. And so then you have instead of Char or a or a sadistic um, Basque, you know, mm-hmm. something like that, yeah. you have Cello who is just hot, <laughs> like coated roast. Oh, for the honor of the lady, lady Almond. I mean, it's just like you know. Okay, here we go. It's over the top, but you know, we can we can breathe. Yeah, no, you're <laughs> yeah. absolutely right. That's, that's a great point. I hadn't thought about how much earlier Gundam series spend those first few episodes establishing the uh, different military factions and, and politics and so forth, and there's none of that here. Um, yeah. We just mentioned that you know, Aug and Axis exist, but really it's the story of Judo stealing a car, you know, or yeah. Mecca in this case. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And all of the various, uh, you know, hijinks that ensue, so to speak. But yeah, it, it's it be, due to that simplification, it's a much easier, it's a, it's a, it's a easier pill to swallow. Yeah, totally agree. That's a great point. Um, would you say that uh, Bright is any different at this point compared to earlier? Gundams. Are you getting any different sense of him now? So, having watched, you know, the original Mobile Suit Gundam, yeah, definitely different Bright from that. <laughs> you know, that yeah, world's mm-hmm. apart. Um, I think this is, and, and he is not the world-weary kind of combative, uh, combatant leader. He is, he's actually working within his experience. I think he is a little bit different than in Zeta. <clears throat> simply because he's just gone through what he's gone through in Zeta and he's on this point of it. He's still he's still that same bright, but he's he's in a place that he literally even though we're joking that's the third time that this has happened. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's actually familiar territory for for him. So he's he's yeah. probably thinking like, Oh, okay. This is gonna be a piece of cake because I've already <laughs> done this. And I don't have to worry about any of this other crap going on. I'm just gonna just let the let the kid do the thing because that's what it always happens to be. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there you go. <clears throat> so I think he's I think he's the same bright from Zeta, but he's definitely a different bright than than original Mobile Suit. Yeah, there's definitely a lot more self confidence here. Uh, yeah. also more flexibility where yeah. as things happen he can just react to those and make reasonable decisions as things are going in. Uh, you know, Bright has never been the, the most brilliant strategist in the world. He doesn't sit down and come up with, you know, here's what we're going to do for the next six months, and it's going to completely de- uh, destroy the enemy. He can take this extremely diverse crew and find the exact perfect middle path for that crew where everyone can do what needs to be done and, and move forward and no one you know gets pissed off and leaves halfway through except that always happens once but <laughs> you know he, he's able to minimize that you know really really well by um, finding that flow in the middle of all the people and you definitely get, get more of that sense here and again something that he's you can see he's kind of gotten to in Zeta and now he's kind of to a almost perfected to a, a, a martial art <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think what it is is that he is a he is now the competent commander that he's supposed to be, yeah. you know, and and you know we're not going to see him like you know in in Yamato where he's going to go put on the you know the admiral cap so to speak and and, and grow the beard and <laughs> gain three hundred pounds as he's sitting in a chair right, you know he's 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 he's, he's a good officer is yeah. what he is now. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah, and it's really interesting seeing just kind of that 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 evolution in a character who you know, it's hard it, it's easy to write a character who's exactly the same, right? And it's easy to write a character who just goes through a wild change, but seeing that natural progression is satisfying. Yeah, uh, for something like this. Um, what do you feel about judo as a protagonist? Like, 
is he feeling like a an effective Gundam protagonist? Is there anything unusual about him that kind of feels weird to you? Anything like that? I don't think it, it so much feels weird as it is a refreshing difference between the, the other two. Mm -hmm. Clearly, he's new type, doesn't know it, yep. um, hasn't really learned that he is, hasn't figured it out yet. Um, <clears throat> but, and he's supposed to be, the next, as we see through the opening sequence, he's supposed to be the next step right. in, in the evolution here. But he's more along the lines of, you know, as I was saying before, he's not a soldier. He's not. It doesn't intend to be a soldier. He doesn't, and he's not for. He's not being forced into a situation where he has to be the soldier and join up with whatever side. Mm -hmm. He's got his own agenda. He's doing his own thing, and that's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think that, in terms of a protagonist, he is not the overwhelming. We have to center on him. And True. him only, right? And we don't have to deal with spectrums. We don't have to deal <laughs> with 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 mommy daddy issues. Apparently, that is all resolved because they're both dead, and or not dead, but they're they're on yeah. different colonies, whatever. Um, but he he doesn't have those problems with the other ones. So the seriousness of the other two, of of Camille and and Amaro, is not there. Mm -hmm. You know, he is, you know, he's dealing with the situations as they arise, but, you know, he has no, like, for example, if he were to go up against Char, he'd be like, at the end of it, if he survives, he's just like, well, if I never had to do that again, great. Yeah, you exactly. Know? Right? Mm -hmm. there, there's no rivalry. There's no True. sense of, I'm going to do this again and again and again until I win. No, he's going to be like, no, winning for me is stealing the Zeta so I can pay for my little sister's education. Mm -hmm. Totally different than the other two. Yeah, you're absolutely right, and it's it's interesting having a character with uh, that doesn't have that shonen drive. You know, he he has a shonen right. drive in the sense that he 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 has the bias for action. He wants to get things done. He's you know constantly uh, you know, he has all the energy in the world, but he's he's not trying to prove himself the way right. you know Naruto is the way Ichigo is in Bleach, the way, you know, right. all these other characters are in a lot of these shonen series. Um, he's a little bit more like Yasukura from Shaman King, or um, dare I say it, a Kenshin Himura from Roni Kenshin, where he's yeah. just this guy doing a thing, and uh, that is refreshing. I think, and I think a big part of the reason why that he doesn't feel the need to prove himself is that he has already done it by taking care of his little sister while You're the right. parents are out doing the thing he's trying to do what his parents are trying to do which is get the money so they can survive yep. and that's that's his okay i've already established for myself that i i know that i can do the thing to to, to make these other things happen mm -hmm. and so i don't have to go out and prove myself in battle there's no reason for me to do it because my battle is already ongoing yeah and i and and like i'm kind of doing okay at the moment mm -hmm. yeah uh it's also interesting comparing him i know we mentioned this in the previous episode how you, you contrast somebody who is already working for a living, somebody who is already caring for somebody else, already protecting somebody else, uh, it brings this whole different vibe to Judo, that he, he has that, that, that self-confidence, he has that nothing to prove because I'm, I'm already doing it and I've, I'm uh, you know, well along that path. He's a miniature adult already, basically. Yeah. Um, and it should be pointed out There are plenty of, you know, kids this age out in the real world who are doing exactly this, right? Right. Uh, th th this is not uh, outside of the realm of possibility. <laughs> right, right. So This is not unusual, actually. Mm, yeah. Um, so well, we actually, really... to that point, to that point, this is the 80s, and it's latchkey generation. Yeah. You know, there's a lot, of, a lot of people whose parents were working and they had a key to the house and that they fended for themselves. So, yep. you know, this is reflective of that, I think, a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and again, you think back to 80s Japan specifically, where this is the boom. You know, mm -hmm. the, the parents are out partying because their company made another 100 million yen today. 
and uh, you know it's uh, it's a very it's a very different time and also it's a uh, an era where kids are not home on the internet all the time they're not doing it you know they you want to go wander around the neighborhood great go go ahead so this is much more possible than it would be today yeah it yeah. would be you know a, you know a couple decades later interesting any other thoughts on episode two um love to see haro back yeah <laughs> <laughs> haro back Enjoy basically her. unchanged Chintai mad, Chinta mad. <laughs> uh, interesting seeing the kids back as well. Mm -hmm. uh, how we we've always got to have those couple of kids on board to provide that comic relief, and it's nice having them more integrated into the story where they actually have. Mm -hmm. Although I will say I find it <clears throat> rather interesting how they're making food for everybody. And the and Shinta is 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 she not Shinta? That's his name. Is making bread like as if the loaf of bread has not been cut already, and he's g pushing it through a slicer. I, I think I'm it's like, yeah, oh. I think it's a slicer. Yeah, and I'm like, wait, isn't this supposed to be you see Century Twenty, whatever? And shouldn't we have sliced bread at this point? <laughs> <laughs> we do, but you need to bake and then put it through the slicer. So the slicer. Ah, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and let us let a five-year-old operate the slicer. Yeah, I mean, this is also a world where they have like landlines on their ship, you know. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I I've always enjoyed in so something that Gundam does a lot, and they, they still do occasionally to kind of have fun with, is the fact that, um, like all communication is person to person. You know, a, a commander never actually reads a readout. Somebody tells him what's on a readout. Um, and, you right. know, it's always some officer will walk on to inform him something that should just be, you know, on a display somewhere. On. Yeah. But that's okay. It's, it's again, one of, those, one of those things that you can't predict the future perfectly, and it's just become a feature of the, of the universe. <laughs> All right. I think that'll do it for episode two. Uh, looking forward to seeing yeah. what episode three is like. Absolutely. Will he steal the Zeta? Who will, will survive? Cello. Who will survive? Will Cello get Lady Hamon's heart? <sighs> Lake Hamon has a heart. Let's be honest. <laughs> when will he realize that he's being used? Oh. <laughs> 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 what was it you said in the days of our Gundam? <laughs> All right, I hope you found that helpful and useful. The issues with the broadcast should be handled. I went downstairs and found we literally had a bug in the system. Uh, unfortunately, not just any bug. Uh, at first, I just, you know, went to squash it, and then I looked a little closer. I took a photo. Um... Yeah. Um... I wonder if there's a little more to this than that. That doesn't look natural. Uh, keep an eye on this and let you know, but uh, yeah. Oh boy, here we go. Uh, anyway, hope that won't be a problem in the future. We'll find out, but again, thanks for watching. See you next time. Till next time, watch more anime.